So this video is going to come across just a wee bit as playing devil's advocate, at least initially, though by its end I hope you'll be able to see that that's not at all what it was trying to be. What I'm talking about in this quick discussion is War Thunder's use and abuse of vehicle repair costs, and how a lot of players consider them to be a bad balancing mechanic. They are not bad? No, I'm not saying that. That's a matter of opinion anyway, and as a content partner with a monthly GE allowance from Gaijin who's been playing the game for some 7 years, I don't feel like anything I say on that is relevant to most of you guys anyway. Whether you happen to naturally enjoy playing vehicles that like to earn a lot of SL, like me with the M46 Tiger or F5E, or are naturally just good at the game, not like me, will ultimately determine how you feel about vehicle repair costs overall. But in this video, I want to set something else straight, which will perhaps inform your opinion. And that is that Gaijin have actually never used repair costs as a balancing factor to buff or nerf vehicles. Given that a lot of my discussion content is mostly critical of Gaijin, you might expect my opinion here to be either get rid of repair costs entirely, or at least standardise them across different tanks per the tier that they're at and how good they are. Which, to be fair, the latter was what I probably would have said last year. And while I do think that some repair costs need changing, or updating more quickly after changes to the game around them, I kind of trust Gaijin on this one. See, a lot of players feel that repair costs are a bad way to balance vehicles. If a vehicle is distinctly overpowered, then giving it a high repair cost doesn't really make it any less so, as it still performs just the same. And the players who are exceptionally good won't really notice the cost or see it as a threat. They may have millions of silver lions banked up, or just aren't dying enough to be at a net loss. Effectively, a high repair cost just punishes the wrong players for playing a particular vehicle at all, right? And the counterpoint to this is that a high repair cost makes a vehicle less likely to be played and therefore less damaging, but I personally don't agree that fewer of those overpowered vehicles in a battle makes that individual vehicle less overpowered. You do tend to play a high repair cost vehicle more reservedly in general, which can help offset vehicles that are extremely good when played hyper aggressively, like the Lorraine 40T, Sagittario or Griffin Spitfire. But again, not if you've got millions of Silver Lions in the bank. And what about vehicles that are better when played more passively, like the F82E or Ferdinand? How about vehicles that are near identical variants across nations and trees, and yet have very different repair costs? or those situations where a vehicle's direct successor has a much lower cost than it does. The thing is that Gaijin have actually never been using repair costs as a factor of a vehicle that can be buffed, read, lowered to aid an underperforming vehicle, or nerfed, or raised, to hamper an overpowered one. It may look like it in a lot of circumstances, like with the quite frankly ridiculous repair cost of the Sagittario, which was very much overperforming but this is just coincidental. Before I explain why, keep in mind the difference between correlation and causation, as in the example of the Sagittario, its repair cost was raised for the exact same reason its BR was, that being that it was unfairly powerful. But the rise in repair cost was not Gaijin trying to nerf it, nor were they trying to hide their bad balance by discouraging players from using the aircraft. People saying this is the case, including Pass Koala and a huge number of other content creators and content partners, are simply wrong. Repair costs are in fact a way of balancing the potential earnings of vehicles in relation to an average, meaning that if a vehicle is on average earning a lot of silver lions, it will receive a high repair cost to maintain balance economically. This is completely separate from the balance of performance in game, though again there is a correlation between the two. A vehicle that is distinctly overpowered for its battle rating like the Sagittario was at 8.0, I mean I had a 10 to 1 KD in it, is also probably going to earn a larger portion of Silver Lions than other vehicles at that same BR, and thus receive a high repair cost. Though the Sagittarius being overpowered is the reason it was so lucrative to play, and its lucrativeness was the reason for its repair cost skyrocketing with a recent update, that's near the same thing as its cost being raised to balance it. Gaijin just happened to do both at the same time, which is a problem, but we'll get to that in a moment. 
To pick a less entangled example, we can look at a vehicle that isn't necessarily overpowered or overperforming for its battle rating, isn't infamously destroying the balance of an entire tier, but does get a high repair cost. The Ferdinand we mentioned earlier is a great example of this, as is the Mitsubishi F1, F82 Twin Mustang, or Warrior IFB. How about the Key 83 Heavy Fighter, notorious for being difficult to play, with a base repair cost of 22,000 Silver Lions, or the infamously expensive Strategic Heavy Bombers, 35 grand per death for the Japanese G8 Renzin, and almost 45 for the American Super Fortress. None of these vehicles are overpowered or overperforming for their BRs. In fact, some of them are downright poor compared to the competition. So if that's not the impetus for their repair cost, what is? Are Gaijin trying to simply punish you for playing them because they don't like those vehicles? Are they so bad at anticipating balance that they legitimately believe all of these previously mentioned vehicles to be too good, and then think that raising repair cost will fix that? Unironically, this is probably what a lot of you are suggesting or have suggested in the past, and though it does appear that way frequently, it just isn't the case. In fact, these vehicles have distinctly high costs for their BRs, because on average, the players using them earn a higher amount of Silver Lions while in them. This isn't necessarily because they're such good vehicles, it's because the skill level of players in them just so happens to be higher. Or, in the bomber's case, it's just very easy to earn large amounts of Silver Lions in them. Whether it's because such vehicles are less likely statistically to die so many times per match, keep in mind you only pay that repair cost when you die, not per game, or if it's just because they appeal to a more skilled player base on average, vehicles like the Warrior or K83 are consistently earning more Silver Lions per death than even objectively superior contemporaries. This means something very interesting, that rather than an indication of how good a vehicle is, repair cost is an indication of the average level of play, a prediction of how well you're expected to do while playing it, if you're average. If you find that you're not earning enough in a vehicle to offset its repair cost, it's not because the repair cost is too high, I'm afraid it's just because you're below average for that vehicle and you need to step up your game or play something else where the average is lower and it's easier to make the grade. Maybe you're dying more often than you should be and hence paying that cost more often, or you're just not playing to the average standard set by the player base in that vehicle. In other words, get good, scrub. This, coupled with the increased potential rewards of higher tier matches, are why repair costs increase with the rank of the vehicle. The average skill level is higher. And interestingly, it's also why premium vehicles often end up with much lower repair costs than tech tree counterparts, even if they are near identical vehicles. Because premiums are accessible to all comers, and not just players who've grinded their way to that level, the average skill level in a premium vehicle will usually be lower when compared to the tech tree vehicles around it, which only players who've grinded for will be playing. A player on the Discord asked me why I think the F5E has a higher repair cost than the F4E, in fact over double, despite, on paper at least, the F4E being the more capable aircraft. As more of a dogfighter, you might say that that's an underestimation of the F5, which is more meta than the Phantom that can't turn as well, and therefore the Tiger is the better aircraft. But whether that's right or wrong though, is a completely separate question that actually has nothing to do with the disparity in their repair costs. The thing is that the Tiger has the higher repair cost not because it's a better or more meta aircraft, whether it is or not, but because it's dying a lot less frequently, is what I told Captain Fubar who asked the question. Looking on Thunderskill, which is the best source of statistics we have, this proves to be correct. The F4E has an average kills per death ratio of 1.51, while the F5E is way above it at 2.57. Interestingly though, their rates of kills per battle is much closer, though the F5 is still in the lead, and the same goes for the two aircraft's win rate. This means that as an average player, you're statistically much more likely to die in an F4 having achieved the same actions, and hence your repair cost is lower. Or in other words, the F5E is earning some 10 grand more per each time it dies and pays that cost, and like clockwork, its repair cost is around 10 grand higher. 
Whether or not it is a better aircraft, the F5E's average performance is higher than that of the F4E. It is doing much better when it comes to how much it achieves per each time that repair cost is paid. The same is true for the Swedish J28, which is a clone of the Vampire but with a much higher repair cost because the average is higher. I find it very interesting that War Thunder does things this way, as compared to its main rival World of Tanks, where the equivalent costs are much more standardised, the economy is much more friendly here. A player who is just slightly above average in any vehicle will always be at a net positive in that vehicle, regardless of its repair cost. In World of Tanks, no player can really earn a thing at tier 9 or 10, even with the most exceptional of performances and damage records. But there are also a number of problems doing things this way, and as I said earlier on in the video, I'm not saying that repair costs in War Thunder are great as they are and that anybody complaining is wrong to do so. For one, raising repair costs can lock vehicles in a loop, where the higher repair cost discourages less skilled players who won't be able to break even, the average goes up because the bottom level has been taken out, and the repair cost goes up again. Until Gaijin notices a problem, we end up with a Lorraine 40T situation, where that vehicle had the highest repair cost of any tank in the game, and nobody wanted to play it. Certain aircraft like the Ki-83 or G-56 are still in that position, and until Gaijin preemptively lower their costs, they will continue to be incredibly rare vehicles. I also don't think that Gaijin are very good at anticipating what changes to the game, such as addition of new vehicles, altered performance stats or shells available, and especially battle rating changes, will do to a vehicle's average earning potential, and it can take them so long to bring in enough data to make any changes that said data becomes unusably skewed. Gaijin raised the Sagittarius repair cost hugely, but they also raised its BR and nerfed its performance at the same time, which will lower its earnings and this wasn't factored into account. Now, so many people will have abandoned the jet entirely that the pool of remaining players to draw data from will have gotten too small for any problem to really be noticed and fixed come the next economy change in several months. Lastly, there is no way to play without constantly competing with the rest of the player base in that vehicle. If you're not constantly at least average, you won't break even, meaning people who don't care about their performance compared to the rest of the players effectively cannot play high cost vehicles without sacrificing crazy amounts of SL. I'm not sure what repair costs look like in arcade, and in sim they're just a colossal mess, but removing repair costs entirely in arcade mode seems to fit with what the mode is for, that being less serious gameplay that lets players just mess around if that's what they want to do. You earn less in arcade anyway, so the differences between most vehicles are somewhat negligible. I think the easiest way to boil these issues down is that discouraging players from picking up a vehicle simply because its existing average standard is so high is bad for the game at large. Along with being disheartening to newer players wanting to learn, throwing them into the deep end and just telling them to swim better. Some good examples would be the top SAM vehicles for Germany, France and Sweden, which all have absurd repair costs reaching towards 20,000 silver lions. These vehicles are integral to top tier lineups and important for the team to have, yet they are prohibitively expensive for newer players to pick up and even try out, because those who reach them first set a high average standard, resulting in Gaijin raising the costs of these vehicles. Now, they won't lower them again unless the average goes down, which it never will if so few players are willing to try them out. An average player picking up one of these vehicles for the first time can almost guarantee losing large amounts of SL, not great for a vehicle type that's important yet rare already, until they and players like them lower the average earnings enough to make a statistical difference. I think a good way to fix these issues would be for Gaijin to change their algorithm so that the rarer a vehicle is, the lower its repair cost can be, despite whatever the average is, thus eradicating the issue the F11F had when it was first introduced, or the Sagittario, Ki-83 and Crotal SAM systems have now. Flat out ignoring any statistics on the average SL gain for new vehicles during their first month or two would also be a great idea. 
The most skilled players are of course going to grind the new stuff before anybody else and do very well in it, but that doesn't mean that everyone else deserves to get screwed over once they get to them, until they lose enough SL to change the statistics. This is even bad for Gaijin themselves, since their goal is to make the new vehicles enticing, yet they keep raising their repair costs because they fail to see that the first players to reach them won't be average players. The other alternative is to, rather than increase a vehicle's repair cost based on its earning a lot of SL on average, decrease its Silver Lion modifier. This however doesn't punish poor gameplay, but instead removes the reward for doing well, so I don't like it. In my opinion, higher risk is always more engaging than lower reward. I strongly believe however that people calling for the removal of repair cost entirely just don't understand what they're asking and what that would create. Repair costs make it so that the only way to farm Silver Lions is to simply perform, which in my opinion is mostly a good thing. If they were removed, the spam of vehicles like the B29, Heinkel 177 and G8N1, Ferdinand and Ho Re, or F82s and Griffin Spitfires would become unbearable. The bottom line is that you should ignore repair costs completely while playing a vehicle, rather than factoring them into how you play. Repair costs should only come into play in order to tell you how good you're doing in a vehicle compared to the rest of the players and what they've been able to do in the same tank or aircraft. If you find a vehicle to be too expensive, just know that it's because the average performance of players in that vehicle is high, higher than you're achieving. Whether it's a great vehicle or not, the rewards for average players in it should even out to almost the same as the rewards for an average player in a much less expensive vehicle. Even with their high repair costs, I can still easily earn positive SL in the F5E or Sagittario, and I never had an issue with the Lorraine 40T either. I may have lost SL in some games, but I made plenty on average. I just wasn't making any more in those vehicles than I would have in a cheaper vehicle, nor was I earning any less. This is precisely the balance repair costs are meant to keep, and while I do struggle a little in the Ferdinand, that's just because I'm not well suited to its playstyle, and hence I'm not performing as highly in it when compared to the average Ferdinand player. You should also never compare a repair cost to that of another similar vehicle, as it doesn't really matter which is better, or what your earnings are like in either vehicle, it just depends what the average is. Certainly don't tell Gaijin to stop balancing by repair cost, because they're not doing so in the first place, and the simple fact that you say that just tells them to ignore all your subsequent feedback. Instead, change what you're asking to show that a certain individual vehicle could do with a repair cost change and why, or if you agree with them, pass on any of the potential fixes I suggested here, maybe share this video as feedback. Gaijin do use cost and earning potential as a way to encourage players to use particular vehicles, or to prevent vehicles that would otherwise be extremely lucrative from being spammed out so much. Of course premiums will always be the best SL farmers, but Gaijin are not and have never been balancing vehicle performance by raising or lowering their repair cost. That's all for today, I hope you've enjoyed this video and were able to take something away from it. I hope this didn't come off too much as playing devil's advocate, though I'm sure someone will accuse me of being a gaijin shill in the comments. And either way, I hope you'll share this video around when people bring up that whole stop balancing by repair cost shtick, and please let me know in the comments what do you think of them. Did I change your opinion at all here? Are you going to try harder now that you know why you're losing SL in certain vehicles? And what do you think of the fixes we put forth? If you enjoyed this video, you can support the channel on Pledsto for just a few cents a month, or check out the Armory for some cool merch. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you lads on the battlefield. I'd be abusing flaps better than I am as well. It takes me a while to actually Fucking delayed turning was a great move. Yeah, yeah, flying the, the actual flight path for a second instead of just trying to pull him into the hub immediately. Oh, that's sexy. That was a good shot.
That was a good shot. <laughs> <laughs> 